the proclamation in the very in the in the book of Genesis, right, the first chapter is let us make man in our own image and likeness. And then I think all of scripture is the story of how he does that. So I guess I see a different paradigm than some other people. The deepest story is that God is making us in his image and how he makes us in his image is through this story of grace that happens as we relate to what I think is a tree in the middle of the garden or, or the cross. And so the story of fall and redemption is a story that happens inside of the story of creation. And God creates through his word, which is Jesus. And so if God decides to make us in his own image and like us, decides to make us in the image of love, then God can do it. And of course, that's the, that's the grand narrative of scripture that Jesus keeps going back to. And so he says to, he says to the people on the side of the mountain, before any of them are Christians, he says, when you pray, say our father. Now, why would, why would truth incarnate say that to just a kind of a random bunch of people unless he meant it, that God really is your father. So I think that's the, I think that's the best argument is that God is sovereign and, and God is good. And then I think there are a gazillion biblical arguments. I just think the Bible doesn't, the Bible makes sense when you, when you put it in that paradigm and you understand what the, the words mean and you re remember that God is the creator, he can destroy and recreate. But if he says, that he's going to make us all in his own image, he can do it. He says, if he says, as an Adam all die, so in Christ will be made alive, he can do it. He, he um, is entirely capable of subjecting all creation to futility, consigning all men to disobedience in order to have mercy on all, which is just what he says, so that by the end of the Bible, he says, look, I make all things new. That's what we're observing in this world. And the, I'm observing a story of grace that's written into my life, it's written into your life, it's written into everybody's life. They may not know it yet, but when I, the story of grace is revealed, it creates something in me, which is trust. And I believe that to exist in God's presence, God who is absolute love and absolutely other, um, absolutely holy, I have to trust him entirely. So I exist right now because he's, thinking me into existence. Somehow, when I become aware of that, trust is absolutely critical for that relationship, and that's faith. I think that's why when Jesus is hanging on the cross and he says, it is finished, he's saying the sixth day of creation is finished and I'm creating faith, I'm imparting my spirit to you. And so the story of fall and redemption is the story of how God makes each of us in his own image and it's right there in the very first chapter of the Bible. On the seventh day, it is finished and everything is good. I believe that will, that will happen because it, because it already has happened. And that's kind of what the meaning of Ionios is. I think it's this eternal reality. And we are living now in something of a, uh, a temporal illusion, the illusion that we are our own saviors and we have to die to that illusion and come to the realization that God is our savior and God is our creator. So I think that's, that's the, the essence of sin, to believe that you create yourself. That's what the devil is tempting Eve to in the garden, is take, take knowledge from this tree and use this knowledge to make yourself in the image of God. In other words, don't trust that God is your creator and then we walk through the story of redemption and we come back to the tree and realize, oh, you, I, am, I am a created being. And that, if I'm a created being, my ego must be an illusion. My ego or uh, my pride, uh, a false ego, the false self, is this insane belief that I'm my own creator. Um, and God is destroying that belief constantly. That's why the world is decaying all around us uh, so that he can reveal his grace in the, in the midst of that. In the midst of the desecration, we can see creation. But I think, I think that's a really big story. Real quickly, I think the big story is that God is making us in his image. And inside that story, he subjects us, um, he, he consigns men to disobedience in order that they may have mercy on all. And that's how he makes us in his image.